guys, sorry for the little bit of a delay um, in posting slash us ghosting you guys. We were not ghosting. My phone just died. Um, but it is Jaystro's birthday. Woo! Uh, Tyler just tried to practice. Because you know we do that little harmony at the end? Tyler tried to practice an entire harmony and it it wasn't pretty. I thought it sounded, it sounded cool at times. It sounded the first two lines sounded good. It yeah. was when we you kind of got stuck really high and then you couldn't come back. Yeah, I couldn't get back. Yeah. No. I tried something. All right. Well, happy birthday, Jaystro. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jaystro. the waxing you guys but I don't it wasn't anything particular at that place I just I always break out a little bit after waxing so anyway happy birthday Jay Stro. <laughs> okay uh, it is also Sari Berry's birthday a lot of birthdays today um or two happy birthday Sari Berry Sari Berry asks um any tips on how to become an adult honestly I feel like I have no tips besides just actually here's my tip and this is this is a job tip I would say Pick your battles. That's how I feel about being an adult. Um, Does that make sense, kind of? Yeah, kind of. I think for my job, what I mean is like, actually, this is what I mean by that. I think that that when you're, you know, in the adult world with managing, like, having a roommate, having a boss, co-workers, everything, there's no, I don't actually think that there's any way that everything is always going to, like, going to be perfect. Like, there's, you're not going to find a situation where every you know, duck is in a row. Like, I think that there's always going to be pros and cons of everything and every choice in life. Yeah. And I think that you, I guess what I mean, pick your battles. I mean, pick what things are non-negotiable, important things to you and stick by those things. And for everything else, compromise. And things that you can actually affect, right? Like, exactly. Like, the big too. thing that gets really frustrating for people is when they try to, you know, change things that they can't actually have any control over. Yes. Um, the other thing I would say, um, I think that's good advice in sort of the same line of fashion is, um, I mentioned it during the uh, Harry, Potter, Harry Potter bath bombs video, which is you should try to be Joe whatever you're doing. Yeah. So like I was Joe Slytherin, so like, I'm all in <laughs> for Slytherin. So, He's gonna keep going down this road. Yeah. So then it's like I am, uh, you know, I so like I think that like you have to make the best of what you have um, and what's in front of you, and I think that if you work hard and you try to really invest time and energy into things. Um, that like, whether it be through like later recommendations, whether it's like something that might not be exactly up your alley, like your boss sees that you're a hard worker, that you have a lot of passion that they will, you know, refer you into places that are sort of more suitable or more aligned with your interest interests. So I think that like being Joe, whatever you're doing, um, is always a good, it was something my father told me that I took to heart and I think that that's important. I agree. Shall Ready? we sing? Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sarah Berry. Happy birthday to you. And many more. A little singing and answering. Sophie Carroll. Sophie Carroll asks. You guys have a lot of similar interests, but what is one thing that I cannot get Tyler to like and vice versa? Mm. Tyler despises Sephora. Yeah. And that's, he doesn't not hate makeup. And he no, doesn't, no, I actually like makeup. He doesn't hate NYX. And he doesn't, I love NYX. He doesn't hate Ulta with the same passion. He likes NYX more than Ulta, but he hates Sephora. Uh, it's the lighting, it's there's no place to sit, plus um, it's like so metallic looking. So it look, looks like it'd be sharp to sit down places. Does not anything? Everything looks like a hard edge, yeah. and uh, it's it's so packed. It's so compact. I think actually, I'm gonna be honest. I think the number one reason Tyler doesn't like Sephora is because the Sephora in Glendale, which is the closest one to us, pretty much. There's one in Hollywood, but Tyler's never really been to that one. The Sephora in Glendale, which is the one that we have most frequently been at together, has very bad cell phone service, so yeah, he can't do that. anything in there besides. Stand makeup. next to me. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that that is a huge thing I hate about that place. Not to mention, there's, there's another thing I don't really like is that um, 
there always is this like serpentine line uh, uh, near the finish. Yeah. Right? And then they oh, and here's it. Oh, you're on your way out, and they go, "Do you want to use your points to buy some blush or something?" And it's like, "Yeah, of course." And then just like it's more shopping. So it just it's just an endless slog. What is something that you can't get me to like? I would say, Saf likes or like at least gets like somewhat interested in most of the things that I like, except probably not football like mm. the NFL you don't well also because I take it to such an extreme like I'm so you're like, too hardcore for me I'm really hardcore so like it just although you we went to an Eagles game one time back in Philadelphia and Saf enjoyed it because I called the coach toad it was funny it was, it was Chip Kelly you toad um, I screamed it yeah just in the, when everyone was quiet too it was great um I, I like here's what I'll say I am I understand most sports pretty well. I am very willing to be at a sporting event. I think they're usually pretty fun. I do think football games can run a little bit long, but I do enjoy them. Um, and I understand what's going on for the most part. What I can't get into is like player stats. Like I can't, I'm not, I don't, I don't care enough. I don't care enough. Like I, I, I like, oh, I know who's on the team. I like them. But like when the stats come in, I'm just like, eh, I'm in, eh, I'm in. yeah, that's fair. You like the story though. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Jyotsna, I don't know if that is how you pronounce your username at all. It's like, it's J-Y-O-T-S-N-A, um, asks, besides Harry Potter, because they've heard us talk about Harry Potter quite enough, what are your favorite books and movies? I read, um, I used to be like a really big bookworm when I was a kid. I was like, with very proud of myself. I would like write on the back and front of my summer reading list, like summer reading log. Like I was really into it. Wow. I haven't been as big of a reading for pleasure type person recently just because I don't have the time. But I do, I do still love to read when I can. Um, I feel like I'm trying to think of, of my favorite books ever. It's hard because I feel like there are rarely, I've definitely met some Here's, here's something I actually truly feel. I've never finished a book that I didn't like in some way. Okay. If that makes sense. Like, I've never, like, wow, I finished that book and I hated it. Nice. If I hate yeah. a book, I cannot read it. <laughs> I cannot finish it. I feel like I'm an English major and I, there were so many books that I wrote papers about that I didn't finish. You know what I mean? That I'd be like, okay, I read enough of this book to be able to close read a few passages. Yeah, like every single one of my papers. I mean... Yeah, that's how I feel. It's like unless I and there, but but I will say that in my time as an English major, I met plenty of books that I did truly love, but and did read the whole thing of. But there were plenty of books where I was just like, you know what? I get it. This is quite enough. I I understand. Directionally and thematically and sort of like symbolically, I know where you're going. Exactly. I could probably write a paper that hits the major points, and well, I'm string it together for a nice little B plus. Yeah, you just you just what well, you can. You, get an A with a paper about a book that you didn't read. I'm just saying. You could really, if you really just, you got a close read. You have, to, you. you have to go into, you have to go into the text, pick out a few passages, and then just let the rest, just don't even talk about the rest. That's how you do it. Um, you so know, this is the question, <laughs> what, what are some, what other, are some books? other books that you actually like? Yeah. Um, <laughs> not just how you're generally approach writing. Not, not, not how I generally approach reading. Isn't this a great This is how to read. This is questions and we kind of answer. They said books and movies. Okay, my favorite movies by far of all time are Clueless and Mean Girls. Get this, get that off. Like favorite movies of all time. That's a good duo, right? Good there. duo. Um, I would say that some of my favorite books. I I do love like some in those same veins, like some kind of like teen books. Like Gossip Girl series was actually pretty epic. It's pretty different from the TV show. I really like the Gossip Girl books. I read a lot. Of, like I feel like I'm all. I also especially in the young adult region, very into, like, fantasy books. Not so much into sci-fi, but very into, like, fantasy-type things. Um, that's, I think, the Harry Potter thing, that there's the through line. In my adult life, I feel like one of my favorite books, very sad book, very sad book, it's called The Remains of the Day, and it's about an old English butler who, like, is basically trying to express 
his emotions, but he's been taught his entire life to repress them, and he's trying to figure out, basically, like, I mean, he's not dying, but he's in, like, sort of the sunset years of his life, and he's trying to figure out, like, basically how to tell this woman that he loved that he loves her. It's a very sad book. It's a, I read it for my English major, but it's a very good book. Damn it. Okay, what, what how about you, Tyler? Oh, well, it's a loaded, uh... I know, it just, I, honestly, I haven't thought about that book in a while, but it just came out, so it remains of the day. Um... I'm, like, really into fantasy in general. Like, I love epic series that have really deep, like, lore. Um, I've actually kind of explored a lot, uh, like, the lores of, like, different gaming franchises that are really fun. Mm. Just because, like, they have, like, especially with sci-fi, because I'm really into sci-fi and fantasy. But with sci-fi, with video games, they go really all out in their lore. And they really, like, they write, like, entire, like, wikis that are all about that. So I love reading that kind of stuff. Um, in terms of, like... And so I do like sci-fi movies, and I like fantasy movies and series. So Game of Thrones right up my alley, Lord of the Rings right up my alley. I like like sort of deep space stuff, like Alien, Aliens, that trilogy, great. I love futuristic type stuff. So Terminator, also there's a little bit of a James Cameron vibe. Um, but you know, like the other things that I really like. Um, back in the day, I was like a little bit of a sucker for like the One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, sort of like I even like you know like those kind of uh, edgy junior year of high school type books, like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's that's like great that Gatsby were assigned in stuff. middle yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so I really, really liked the, that reading. And then I also kind of got into for a little bit, and still kind of like, like sort of like the transcendentalists. Like I, I do like like Henry David Thoreau and like Ralph Waldo Emerson and stuff. I kind of like the stuff they write, like poetry here and there. Um, but my favorite type of books that I'll read if I was just gonna coop up after a long day is like history books. I really like, oh, yeah. uh, like sort of like non fiction history books that kind of like delve into different parts of the world um, at different stages of history that are somewhat overlooked um, so there's a lot of cool stages especially in like sort of the Middle East to uh, Far East that have like just like history that like I think um, based on like my studies in high school that were somewhat lost that I think are really interesting one book is called The Splendid Exchange mm. which is really cool so yeah it's some of the stuff that I was I'm into in terms of reading <clears throat> and in terms of like uh, movies and uh, sort of like just entertainment yeah one thing I realized, I've talked about this book, and it's just this other book just came to mind, another one that I read in my adult life, because I feel like so many of the books that I think about that, like, shaped my life, I read when I was, like, 13, you right. know what I mean? Yeah. But in my adult life, I've talked about this in a room before, um, it's this book, it's called Double Cup Love by Eddie Huang, and um, that's Huang, like, H-U-A-N-G, um, and basically, Eddie Huang is the guy whose life fresh off the boat was based off of, like, his memoir is fresh off the boat, um, and this is like a different, but it's also sort of, a, it's a nonfiction book, kind of memoir-ish, but it's a nonfiction book, basically about him traveling to China and like looking for inspiration in the food of his motherland. I think it's a very good book and it's something I read kind of recently. So I brought that up because like an actual book that I read recently. Um, but yeah, that's a long post, but there are some books and some movies. A Jyotsna? It's a Jyotsna. I don't know how to say it. It's J-Y-O-T-S-N-A. You tell me how to say it in the chat, please. I'm sorry if I did it wrong. Brittany KAJ asks, if you could only use one makeup product for the rest of your for the rest of your life, what would it be? Can I say the anti-highlighter? Because I feel like you can use that thing for pretty much everything. That is true. You got right? a lot of use out of that thing, so you can not as a highlighter though, but you could use it as lipstick, eyeshadow slash. You mean the eclipse probably, shave? Eclipse Eclipse Shade by Yes, I mean, I mean the um the, uh, what is it called? Inner Glow Cream Pigment in the shade Eclipse by Ritual de Ville. That's right, Ritual de Ville. I don't know how... Uh, that was right, I think, yeah. I don't think... I said, I said it Italian again. I don't know why it went that way. Um, I think that probably if you had, like, something like that where it was, like, a dark purple or, like, a purple cream product, like a blush or a lipstick, you could probably use it for lipstick, blush, and eyes. So... That sounds like a winner, but also a cheating answer. I should just say liquid eyeliner and just like wear like black, like crusty lipstick every day. You know? Liquid eyeliner you on my... You have one that you can use for the rest of your liquid life. Liquid eyeliner on my eyes and lips. All day, every day. Hey guys, we are in our workspace right now um, because I think that I left our SD card here and I didn't want to. Though, we could have just left it here and came back tomorrow morning, but... 
Tyler puts up with me and lets humors me being an annoying person. Well, I think stop. Asking stress. him for stuff. Being stressed about it, so I feel like she won't go to sleep tonight. She doesn't actually check. Oh, it smells funky in here. Yeah, it's right here. Thank goodness. What's well, also a very Got it. Good card, so. um, Rachel B asks, what are some. Hang on, guys, hold on. We're going to you seem like vlog. Here's Mark's little Oh, bird. yeah. Because Mark likes birds. Mark, it's just goes, a cute little desk toy. Mark goes, and I love birds. <laughs> um, what's Rachel B asks, what is a weird thing about your body slash uh, weird allergies that you have? Tyler's been allergic because he won't rebuy his nasal spray that he needs, so, needs, so he just keeps sneezing. Um, no, that's keep, true. Yeah, and I keep on half sneezing. It's, a, it's stupid. Tyler is allergic to cats. Which is the stupidest I'm thing of all. I'm allergic to some cats. I think there's like a, there is such thing as a hyperallergenic cat. I'm not that allergic to crusty, but there's just like a lot of pollen in the air and crusty shedding, so I'm a little bit allergic. I'm very allergic to horses. Uh, I tried to ride on a horse one time, and because I was so acting up, I, wore, I put on swimming goggles and a bandana right under there to try to cover my face. It didn't make any difference. I got really, really bad allergies. That's actually a really... So Tyler never told me he was allergic to horses. It just never came up because we've never thought about riding horses. And Stephen Lim and I were planning that date that we went to on for that Worth It episode where it's like worth it like date, like cheap versus expensive date. And the middle date was going to be horseback riding and it fell through at the last minute. And Tyler never told me he was allergic... You never told me you were allergic to horses. Like for dates... Like it well, it was just, it, yeah. it was just, it was like, honestly, it was fate that Tyler wasn't going to die that day. <laughs> Imagine, die. because we were supposed to, we were surprising him with the dates, basically. Um, well, yeah, you would have so died, you like, but it just... You, like, you cryptically were like, are you allergic to horses? What do you think about horses? I was like, I can't ride them. Yeah. <laughs> um, am I allergic to anything? Maybe. I got, you know when you get your allergies tested like on your arm where they like prick your arm with like the little bits of the allergens? The only thing that acted up in any significant way was ragweed. <laughs> so I'm allergic to ragweed. My arm, um, I'm uh, from the horse. When I from the horse? Yeah. Um, I am not really allergic to anything else, but when I was a kid, I pretended I was allergic to kiwis because this, this is why. Because they weirded you out because they had the hair on the outside? Not really, it's actually. Really good. This is This is what happened. Is that there was a girl in my class who I wasn't not friends with, but we weren't close friends. We were, like, kind of friends. And she said, close your eyes. And I said, why? And she was like, close your eyes. This is fourth grade. She was like, close your eyes. And I was like, why? And so I closed my eyes, and I felt that she was going to feed me something. I knew. I could tell. I could. I, she probably said, open your mouth. Yeah, something like that. Like I was like, classic, she, she was like mistake. going to feed me something, and I opened my eyes as she was about to like, feed me a slice of kiwi, and I don't know why I did this. Just like crazy, like nine year old, like weird, spiteful Sophia being like, I'm allergic to kiwis, and I made her feel so bad. I don't so know. You had, you had to go in on the bit. I had to go in on the bit, so I pretended I was allergic to kiwis for like two years. I didn't need a single sounds, kiwi. It, it sounds it sounds crazy. But it, it just came out. It's not, it's not. It just came out. Like well, I just sure said it. Listen, like, it's it's very sort of it's a typical thing like when you're like in high school or middle school or lower school and someone's like messing with you, you're just like I want to make sure this person does not mess with me. Like this yeah, I was like, you I'm, like, I don't want that. They might try to shove the kiwi in your mouth yeah. or something, or throwing it at you, or like prank you with the kiwi. We open it up, and then it's just like kiwis just fall. And so then you had it. Said, so I literally pretended I was allergic to kiwis for two years, but I don't even not. Li- I don't love kiwis, so it's not like I was missing out on my favorite fruit. But I definitely didn't hate them. Like they're fine. Mark likes birds. I like birds. Okay, so Fresco Frank asks. Was it scary going independent? And the answer is definitely yes, it was pretty scary. Um, I think that... It wasn't terrifying. It wasn't, yeah, exactly. It wasn't terrifying, you know? Like, I think that I... You were ready. Was Yeah, I was pretty ready to leave, and I was really excited for starting my own channel, and I was really... Um, and I still am, like, really excited about the ideas that, you know, the videos that we are making and we wanted to make, and, like, just, you know, sort of... This was ready for a new challenge, so I was really excited about it, but I was definitely scared, and I definitely, like, there's definitely still nerve-wracking moments about, like, you know, just, it's less, it, things are just less certain when you don't have a salary job, and you're just, like, you know, kind of being your own boss and managing your own time and stuff like that, but it was definitely, definitely 
definitely nerve-wracking and yes it was scary at times but I do think it was worth it but I also think that like I like I would say that fear was not my primary emotion nor was it my primary motivator but it definitely was present fashion fangirl asks any suggestions for new cat moms Tyler has one yes okay it's we're like new house mom and dads and in this case the cat was older but i'd say that like when it comes to like house breaking your cat you have to kind of play a little bad cop for a little bit in terms of like getting them potty trained like i feel like we learned that like when we first got crusty he was peeing and pooping like all over the ground and he couldn't get used to the litter box so we just we crated him for like a week and it was awful but since then he's had like one or two very little mistakes and they're our fault really because we like didn't like we had the door was closed the litter box so I sort of say one of the key things is you got to play a little bit rough with them just to make sure that they they learn the rules of the house and then they'll be good to go where's the cat let me grab him cross man I demand cat I refuse to leave my roost but I demand cat cat where is cat Happy Easter, Krusty. Sra Ring asks, Who is your favorite non-primary Harry Potter character and why? Um, I think that what is non-primary is the first question because if non-primary means just like not Harry, Ron, and Hermione, I have so many. My favorite is probably McGonagall. I don't know if she's too primary. Love McGonagall. McGonagall is everything, and so is Dame Maggie Smith. Um, in terms, if she's too primary, I'm trying to think of someone a little bit more random. She can't be primary. Is she not primary? I don't think so. I, I think okay, she's, then I'm sticking with McGonagall. The, the first character anyone meets, you know. So I, I'm I'm obsessed with McGonagall. McGonagall is my favorite. I also love. Um, I mean, McGonagall in the books is a freaking amazing, but I love in. Um, Deathly Hallows Part 2 when Dame Maggie just like takes the ho- the castle back from it's incredible. It's so good. That's my favorite scene. Oh, God. Okay, Tyler, any thoughts? Mm-hmm. Um, I love Hagrid. He doesn't get enough justice in the movies, I think, toward down the stretch. I agree. I think Hagrid in the books is much more exciting. Uh, let's think here. I mean, uh, Hagrid's good. Dumbledore is definitely primary character. I like Flitwick in the movies. Uh, I like Prof- Professor Sprout. I like the professors. They're fun. Yeah, the professors are great. Like, when they go to classes, I like when they go to classes, like, that are not, like, just potions or, like, the, the main classes. Yeah, exactly. And they exactly. have, like, the professor that they, like, reference. You're like, who is that? Like, the the professor of history. Or, like, you know, history professor, of wizards. Professor Bins? You mean the ghost who teaches? Yes, things like that. I like them. And I like Nearly Headless, headless Nick. Where was he in the movies? You know who did not make it to the movies that I'm still sad about? Peeves. Peeves. He's in one shot, isn't he? Really? Maybe. Looney Lovegood asks, if I could cast Tyler as any movie or musical character, who would it be? Are you thinking? Yeah. Are you asking me? No, I'm looking at you to see who I want to cast you as. I know who. I think that you would be... This one doesn't just roll off your head, does it? I think that you would be... You know who he is, kind of? I think he's Troy from High School Musical. I don't know. I've never seen High School Musical. That's a big compliment. Yeah? I had a big crush on him. Because you kind of got that, like, jock side, but you also prefer to sing. You know how to hit a Tyler doesn't know any High School Musical. It's so annoying. Because <laughs> like, I always try and sing to him and he has no idea what I'm talking about. Okay, who would you cast me as? You? I'm trying to think because there's definitely things that you would like, I feel like. Um, like You don't have to say something I would like. Queen Ophelia? Who's Queen Ophelia? Is that not her name? Titania. Oh, from Midsummer Night's Dream? Does that count as a movie or a musical? No. Um, let's think here. Well, I know that you'd like to be a 
one of those Disney villains. It'd be so fun. Oh, like, yeah. A live action Sophia as Ursula. Oh, yeah. I'd love that. That'd be so fun. Yeah. You know who you could be? Who? Flynn Rider. And at last, I, right? Yeah. See the light. And it's like the night and crusty. Crusty loves that song. I can literally smell Krusty's poop from here. You're he, not coming on the bed, bro. He just pooped. I smell Buddy, it. I can smell the poop. It's still on him, probably. You're cute, though. Okay, guys, this is going to be the last question. I'm so sorry if we didn't get to your question. I think I missed a couple in the middle there. Um, just ask it again next time and be like, Sof, you didn't do mine last time. You better freaking do it this time, and I promise you I will. Um, this one is from Potter Gal. This is like one of the last questions we got, so I kind of like skipped down just for the last one just because I heard a couple of people wanting an answer to this as well. Potter Gal asks how to make yourself feel not forever alone when you're single. Tyler, you had a thought? Yeah, um, so like when I was a couple years out of uh, college, I was just like very much in like, um, I'm not going to date for a couple years mode. Um, this actually right before I met Sophia, so it didn't really work out. But uh, I was just sort of like, I wanted to focus on other things. And the the idea I was always going for was to like date myself, right? To find things, become really self-sufficient, hobbies, interests, things that I really liked. Um, that was when I did a lot of exploring in LA, like just sort of, um, you know, developing relationships outside of potential like dating relationships, just meeting people, just trying to be friendly with them. And, like, by, like, not trying to focus on the possibility of dating, it was a great way for me to sort of, you know, find, um, you know, feeling of sort of, like, self-confidence through sort of, like, sort of um, self-sufficiency. Just, like, sort of, like, I don't really need to go uh, try to find someone to date. And so then I actually ended up feeling as though when I first then met Sophia, like, several months later, it was kind of one of those things where it's like, oh, yeah, like, I have all these things I really like, and then I felt like as though more, I was more like I was sharing things with her that I had already sort of interest that already had built up. So what I kind of would say is like, I think that there's like actually like a real nice experience of when you are single and you are feeling alone and you answer that with sort of, again, dating yourself and really finding things that you are super in, interested in independently. There's almost an, a, a, like a really strong feeling of a sort of like, kind of like a empowering feeling sort of like, Hey, I can do this. I can hang out alone. I would say, um, something that, it's funny because before Tyler and I started dating, I would consider myself like somewhat unlucky in love. Like I had a couple of relationships, but like nothing ever really that serious, to be honest. And like mostly a lot of like me like pining after people sort of hopelessly. I feel like it's probably the story of my like, like love life before Tyler. Um, and I would say that in that time, I definitely like, did have moments where I felt like forever alone, but in hindsight, it's so much better to be single than to be in a not healthy or like good relationship, if that makes sense. Like, not to say that every relationship that doesn't last forever isn't a healthy or good relationship, but I just felt like if like all those times where I was like pining or being like oh wow I really like this person they don't like me back but if only I could convince them to like me like that's not a good healthy start to a relationship like you shouldn't have to convince someone to date you or convince someone to like you so it's I think it's better to to be single than to be like kind of yeah like not in a relationship that's gonna be like good and healthy and prosperous for you you know does that make sense totally yeah that's how i feel anyway um we're gonna brush our teeth and go to bed so we'll check in one more time we'll check in one more time i hope that helped does that does that make sense at all i don't know